The Persistence of Memory, from the pages of the Bank Street Book of Fantasy. More information on this book is available in the description below. Written by Gail Baudino. Adapted by David M. Harris. Illustrated by Rorick Tyler. Narrated by Felix Warren. Honey, I can't find your airline tickets. Barb, I gave them to you when I got home from work. I asked you to put them away. And I did. I put them someplace safe. And you forgot where you put them. This happens every month when I go to Houston. Never mind. I'll find another way of getting there. I'll be home tomorrow night. Mommy, where's my baby bunting doll? Dillbox says you put it away for me. I did? I guess so, Stacy, but I can't remember where I put it. When Frank got home from his trip, he told Barbara about his meeting. So that whole oil rig fell down because someone forgot to tighten a bolt. We were lucky no one got hurt. Don't they have checklists for things like that? Yes, but someone forgot to use it. Just forgot. Well, some people just forget things sometimes. Yeah, of all the stupid things to do, millions of dollars turn into scrap metal because some idiot forgot to... Honey, please, Stacy, why don't you go play with Dilbach? Barbara, if your memory were better, would you feel better? A lot, and you wouldn't miss your planes either. In Houston, we did a study on why accidents happen. Mostly it's because someone forgets something. But the scientists also came up with a kind of cure. Let me show you something. What is it? It makes me dizzy to look at it. It's a memory exercise card. I just stare at the card, move it around, and recite the exercises to myself. You're sure this will help? It's worth a try, isn't it? Honey? The sink! I forgot to turn off the water! Three weeks later. Where's that checkbook? Those memory exercises haven't helped a bit. Give them time. The group in Houston that's testing them says it takes a while before they start having an effect. What about you? I'm not doing them. My memory's fine. Ah, there's the problem. Broken spade lug. I'll have to call the hardware store to see if they have a replacement. The number's 555-5707. You looked it up for the door hinges, remember? That was two weeks ago. I think those exercises are working. My little girl wants to go to the hardware store with me? Can Dilbach come too? Dilbach? Yeah, sure, bring him along. She takes Dilbach pretty seriously. Lots of three-year-olds have invisible playmates like Dilbach. I think we just kind of forget to believe in them as we get older. It's kind of sad. Yes, I had one when I was four. What was her name? After they left. Odd. What's Stacy been playing with now? I'll have to show these to Frank when he gets home. Barbara thought she'd misplaced the feathers. Hi, honey, we're back. No, she remembered exactly where she'd put them, but they were no longer there. Then, a few days later, and don't forget to fill out the gas tank. Thwack. What was that sound? Stacy, did you see something by the sofa? Yes, that was Dilbach. Are you sure the neighbor's cat didn't get in? That was Dilbach. Thwack. Good morning, Barbara. Who... What are you? I am called Dilbach. I am a griffin. I live here. I am Stacy's imaginary playmate. Do you not remember? You've seen me a thousand times in your house, but each time you forgot, because I willed it so. The exercises you have been doing are blocking my efforts, so now you can remember me. So Dilbach became, or rather continued to be, a part of the household. He was soon Barbara's friend as well as Stacy's. He began to show them the other imaginary beings who lived in their town. There were unicorns in the park. They were fleet-footed creatures of moonlight and frost, and they chased one another through the flower beds without harming a petal. Dilbach introduced them to the gnome who lived at the base of the large oak. Hello. How do you do, madam? And to the nixie, a water sprite who lived in the lake. The child to come is healthy and well, lady. You'll have another pretty daughter. Soon Barbara could even see the great flying horse that sometimes flew over the town at sunset, a friend of Dilbach's, of course. The magical beings became a part of Barbara's everyday life. Your move, madam. But Frank never seemed to notice the difference. Wouldn't it be interesting if we could remember our imaginary playmates? Honey, memory only works when there's something to remember. 
Imaginary creatures aren't real. Dilbach, what about Frank? Will he ever be able to see you too? Not unless he does the memory exercises. But of course, Frank does not have any trouble with his memory. Yes, I'm still doing the exercises. I'm wondering if you shouldn't stop. We're having some problems with the test group. They're reporting some strange thoughts. You'd better quit. What happened to the memory card? I know I left it right here. I took it. We're calling in all the materials so we can get a handle on this. I don't need my wife going crazy on me. You're just jealous. Why don't you do the exercises? Then you could tell all your researchers exactly what happens. I don't have any problems with my memory. I don't need to do the exercises. Then you can ignore the effect on your memory. Just concentrate on the weird side effects. What weird side effects? All right, I'll find out for myself. Frank took out the card of his briefcase and went through the exercise. When he was through, he climbed into bed and went to sleep, after locking the card in the briefcase. What do I do now? You remember the exercises, do you not? Of course, but... And you remember the card, do you not? Barbara understood. The card was no longer needed. The next morning, Frank was in a bad mood. He stormed off for his regular business trip to Houston. Slam! All will be well when he can see us, but it will take a month. Dilbach, the baby is due in a month. I don't want Frank to be angry with me then. When he returned, Frank said nothing more about the exercises, but each night he did them, locking the card in his briefcase before he went to sleep. Barbara continued to the, do the exercises herself with an imaginary card. Weeks passed, and at last she could feel her baby was ready to be born. But the weather was bad, and Frank was in Houston. Oh, Dilbach, it's happening! Call the birth center. If there's anyone there, tell them you are coming in. But how? Our car won't get through this snow. Just tell them. I have things to attend to. There was a midwife on duty at the birth center, but Barbara could not reach Frank in Houston. We must leave, now! How are we getting there, Dilbach? There's a blizzard outside. Haven't you noticed? Blessings upon you this day, mother. I am Amarantha. If you agree, I will take you and your children. Ta-da! The winged horse carried them safely to the birth center. Barbara, how did you get here? You wouldn't believe me. I just wish Frank could be here, too. I'm afraid your husband is stuck in Houston. The snow has all the airports closed. Frank has to get here. Can't Dilbach help? Dilbach? Who is Dilbach? Dilbach went away. Frank! How did you ever make it? I came Dragon Express. Dilbach showed up to warn me. But I can see them all now. And you know what? I don't feel a bit crazy. We'll call her... We'll call her Amarantha. Better that than Dilbach. A distant chorus of laughter, like the tinkling of silver bells, welcomed a new child into our strange and wonderful world. The Persistence of Memory by Gail Baudino Gail Baudino grew up in Los Angeles and then moved to Denver, which she likes much better. Besides writing fantasy stories, she teaches people how to play the harp and plays one herself. She's also a dancer with the Maroon Bells Morris Dancers in Boulder, Colorado. Her stories have appeared in a collection called Amazons 2 and in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. She has also written two books of a fantasy trilogy called Dragon Sword. In The Persistence of Memory, one woman learns that a child's imaginary friend can be as important as any of our real friends. Now that you've read this story, ask yourself, do you remember having an imaginary friend when you were younger? Does your younger brother or sister have one now? Do you think the mother was silly to try the memory exercises? Why or why not? If you liked this story and you liked the reading of this story, please like, please comment about it. Comment if you've got requests for other things that you'd like me to read. And uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more of this. I plan to show more of uh, comics from this book in particular, the Bank Street Book of Fantasy. Please check out the description for details on how to obtain it. It is out of print, but since it was a mass market paper paperback edition, it's fairly easy to, to get track of. So um, 
I highly encourage getting the actual physical book to read the comic. I've provided a, a kind of a rough look at what the graphics look like, but I really want to kind of keep it to the book and the publisher and all that. So please go take a look at that, and thanks for watching, and see you later.